Welcome back to the channel, where we break down the stories shaping Asia's future. Everyone thinks the AI race began with ChatGPT, NVIDIA's stock price, and billion-dollar data centers. But the countries that will actually dominate this space didn't start with chatbots. They started with infrastructure. And Malaysia entered this race more than 20 years ago, quietly, with a plastic card. That card was my cut. While most of the world was still photocopying passports and stamping paper forms, Malaysia rolled out one of the most advanced national digital identity systems in the world, not as a pilot, not as a research project, as nationwide infrastructure. That decision, barely noticed outside the region at the time, may end up shaping Southeast Asia's AI future. When people talk about AI, they imagine models, chips, algorithms, and data centers. But those are not the real bottlenecks. The real bottleneck is trust. Who is the user? Is that identity authentic? Can the system safely connect services, payments, healthcare, subsidies, and records to that person? Most countries still do not have reliable answers to those questions. Without trusted identity, AI systems fragment. Fraud scales faster than governance. Public services collapse under complexity. This is why AI dominance is not just a technology problem. It is an institutional architecture problem. And this is exactly the problem Malaysia solved before most countries even understood it existed. My Cut launched in 2001. At the time, this was radical. It combined biometric verification, cryptographic security, and multi-purpose digital services into a single national platform. Banking, immigration, healthcare, voting, transport, government services, all anchored to one secure digital identity. Many developed nations avoided this path because it was politically risky, technically complex, and institutionally disruptive. Malaysia embraced it. What emerged was not just an ID card. It was the digital spine of the country. That decision forced Malaysia's public sector to modernize decades earlier than most of the world, building deep institutional competence in digital governance long before digital transformation became a management buzzword. This is what real long-term strategy looks like. Fast forward to today. One of the clearest examples of this foundation paying off is the Booty 95 subsidy system. Fuel subsidies are notoriously difficult to administer. In many countries, they leak massively, attract fraud, and fail to reach the people they are meant to help. Malaysia solved this problem with precision targeting. Because Booty 95 integrates directly with my coot linked identity and data, the system can verify eligibility instantly, prevent duplication and fraud, and deliver assistance efficiently at scale. This is not experimental AI. This is applied digital governance working exactly as designed. And it works because Malaysia already solved the hardest part of any AI system, trusted identity at national scale. Malaysia is not replacing its legacy advantage. It is upgrading it. The upcoming integration with my digital ID extends my cuts identity infrastructure into modern cloud and mobile ecosystems, enabling seamless authentication across platforms, private sector adoption, AI-driven public service delivery. On top of this, the government has committed RM20 billion dollars under the National AI Roadmap 2030, focusing on data centers and cloud capacity, AI research and talent development, automation of key industries, and regulatory frameworks for responsible AI deployment. This is not the construction of a new system from scratch. It is the acceleration of one that has been maturing for over two decades. Most countries trying to build AI ecosystems today face a brutal bottleneck. They lack a unified digital identity layer. Without identity, data cannot be trusted, services remain siloed, fraud multiplies, and AI deployment stalls. Malaysia does not have this problem. It solved it in 2001. 
That gives Malaysia something extremely rare in global technology competition, a compounding advantage. While other countries scramble to retrofit identity systems onto existing institutions, Malaysia is stacking AI capabilities on top of a foundation that already works. This is why capital alone cannot replicate Malaysia's position. This advantage is structural, institutional, and historical. Southeast Asia's next digital leader will not simply be the country with the most funding announcements or the biggest data center press releases. It will be the country that can deploy AI safely, at scale, across government, industry, finance, healthcare, and society. That requires identity, trust, governance. Malaysia already has them. And now it is aligning capital, talent, regulation, and infrastructure on top of that foundation. My cut was never just a card. It was a national technology strategy disguised as administrative reform. For 20 years, Malaysia quietly built the hardest parts of an AI-ready society, while the rest of the world debated whether such systems were even possible. Now, as the AI age arrives, Malaysia is not scrambling to catch the wave. It is finally surfacing an advantage it has been compounding for decades. And that may be the most important story about Southeast Asia's digital future that almost nobody is talking about. If this helped you see the region differently, consider liking the video and subscribing for more deep dives like this.